the taste of two different singers, you have two different voices. A woman might have a high, clear voice and a man a low, rough voice. In order to sing together, they have to respect their musical differences. What better example of this than in 1985, when producer Quincy Jones brought together 46 musical stars to record the song, We Are the World, written by Michael Jackson and Lionel Richie, to raise consciousness and funds for hunger in Africa. Now, with stars as big as Michael Jackson, Lionel Richie, Stevie Wonder, Kenny Rogers, Tina Turner, Bob Dylan, Paul Simon, and Tina Turner, et cetera, Ray Charles, you could have had musical chaos. You could have had one huge ego bumping up against the other. There was a rumor going around that Quincy Jones had to post a sign at the studio door, leave your egos at the door. He said that wasn't true because everybody pulled together, everybody was committed to the cause. The session worked because under the inspiration of Quincy Jones, who, if you know him, is truly an inspirational man. I like to say to know Quincy is to love him. Under his inspiration, the stars realized that, hey, that they had a bigger purpose than themselves, bigger purpose than their egos, bigger purpose than their careers, far, far bigger, to address one of humanity's gravest crises. They respected each other's strengths and weaknesses. They collaborated for a high purpose. The record raised $75 million to combat hunger in Africa, an unprecedented event, and still stands as the largest such music charity event in history. Here's another example. Duke Ellington was one of America's greatest musicians, band leader, composer, arranger, conductor, uh, soloist. For half of his career, he collaborated and worked intimately with someone very different, very, very different than he was. Ellington was tall, outgoing, crazy about the ladies, and they were crazy about him, and manipulative. Billy Strayhorn from Pittsburgh, 16 years his junior, was short, openly gay, shy, and retiring. They had different musical strengths. And did they ever respect those differences? In the early 1950s, Ellington's career was at a low point. He needed a hit. He had a choppy little melody going through his head. And I'll give you a sample of that melody. It was just a kind of a germ of an idea. That was the germ of the idea he had going through his head. So Billy Strayhorn, his collaborator, took that, added harmony, fleshed it out to a complete piece, and it became his uh, most recorded song, their most recorded song, in, of any of the hundreds that they did together. They respected each other's differences. They needed each other. They came together, and they produced Satin Dow. So you know what I'm talking about. I'll play it for you now.
That's Satin Doll, the sheet music. You'll see a third name on there, Johnny Mercer, because it became a three-way collaboration when a few years later he added lyrics to it. Now, they learned from each other, Ellington and Strayhorn, and they demonstrate a truth laid out by the great playwright George Bernard Shaw. If you have an apple and I have an apple and we exchange apples, well, we'll each still have one apple. But if you have an idea and I have an idea and we exchange ideas, then we'll each have two ideas. Ellington and Strayhorn exchanged lots of ideas and they were a very productive collaboration. <laughs> 